back home. And the word I want you to take to your heart today is tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. To take a leap of faith and join the struggle for the liberation of our beloved nation, Biafra. These are men, heroes and heroines who prepared us for the courage and bravery we enjoy and we display today. The fight for Biafra liberation made us today to stand very tall against Islamic State and against the state-sponsored terrorist. There is no time in human suffering when one is forced to make a choice. A choice whether to submit or to fight, even if it means paying the ultimate price. And I want to tell you, Biafra, today is that time to make a choice. The choice is right before our very own eyes. A choice to submit to the Islamic State and seeing our women and children getting killed, chopping off their hands, their legs, and seeing our land being overrun by terrorists. Or a choice to fight and fight once and for all and put to an end to the upsurge of terrorists that is migrating from Sahel region, Central Africa Republic, from Mauritania down to the Sahel region and then down to Nigeria and the inquest to conquer the entire Southern Nigeria. Today, I believe the millions of Biafra has made a choice to fight. I am very proud of you who has made it very possible to see Nigeria state fail. I thank you all who participated in making sure that we have what we call the political upheaval, the highest one in the history of Nigeria today. It is the activities of the Biafra liberation. In 1967, when the International Court of Justice and other world powers failed to assist the cause of Biafra self-determination and freedom, in facial circumstances, the lackadaisical and nonchalant attitude of the world leaders collaborating with Nigeria led to the death of over 3 million children from Biafra land. This prompted one of our stewards and a hero in the name of Philip F. Young to surrender to Nigeria. In the course of surrendering to Nigeria, because of the children that were dying out of starvation, he cautioned Nigeria and said, if you don't treat these people good, their children are going to rise up and fight you again. My fellow Biafrans, I want to categorically say it today that the children Philip F. Young was talking about, Simon Ekma is one of them. And you that have supported this cause, in the midst of all blackmail and propaganda, you are one of those children. I want to call on Biafrans to be ready. Just like every other nation that fought their way out of slavery. The swearing in of Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Shetima has confirmed that indeed you are already officially in Islamic State which the Biafra people can never accept. 
no matter how you try to paint it, when in a supposed secular state, you have the president a Muslim, the vice president a Muslim, there is nothing else that you need to know other than you are under Islamic State. I want to inform Biafras today that when we talk about Islamic State, we're not just talking about entire Islamic world. No. I want to draw a line for you to understand the type of Islamic State we are talking about. We are talking about Sunni Islam who are the Taliban. We are not talking about the Shia Islam. The Shia Islam are those you see in Iran. Why the Sunni are the Taliban in Afghanistan. And I want every one of you to understand that the fight to liberate Biafra is not just about political fight, it is also a religious fight and a fight for survival. Having said this, with the development in Nigeria today, I want to put entire Biafrans on notice that we will cross many rivers of blood before we can achieve our freedom. The just concluded general election has confirmed Islamization that our heroes and heroines fought against. In order to restore peace, which is the agenda of the Biafra people, again, we will cross many rivers of blood before we can achieve that. During the PDP primaries, before the general election, I can remember vividly the word of Anim Pius Anim, those political leaders that have given vote of no confidence on the 29th of May, 2023. He said, I am shocked that consideration for voting the PDP presidential candidate was not based on the burning national issues and how to solve them, but still on the old primordial sentiment. It is time to embrace Biafra. I am telling him. And because of their nonchalant attitude, made the Nigeria state to take them for granted. I have watched former President Jonathan lament about the new electoral law, even before the shenanigans you see today as a democratic process. He lamented, how can a candidate are elected, or how can candidates are elected and he described that particular electoral law as a disaster. That electoral law is what finally brought in Islamic State in Nigeria today. And indeed, it became a, a disaster that President Gulo Jonathan rightfully described it. Today, President Gulo Jonathan is saying a different thing under Islamic State. Fellow Biafrans, the swearing in of Tinubu Ashetima has once again validated our fight to exit Nigeria. And I want to ask those who may have a divergent view today to tell me what makes us one Nigeria. The one Nigeria mantra has been the colonial interest, only for the colonial interest, that the slave masters of amalgamation amalgamated all the countries that, they, that invaded within Oduduwa Republic, Biafra Republic, and the Arewa Muslim nation, and called them Nigeria. This is a fact that cannot be disputed. Our culture are different. 
Our culture are irreconcilable. Our religions are different. Our mode of worship are posed apart. Our mentalities are so different. And even our languages are absolutely to make a country like that to work. The serving interests of a particular group. For us today, that in 1947, those who are regarded as the founder of Nigeria or independent, Obafemi Awolo said Nigeria is not a nation, that it is a mere geographical expression. Can you dispute this fact? There is no Nigeria today as the same as the English, Welsh, and French. The world, Nigeria, is merely a distinctive appellation to distinguish those who live within the boundaries of Nigeria and those who do not. I want to ask you people or remind you that to date, nobody has got and nobody has the audacity within the current setup of Nigeria to say contrarily to this declaration of Obafemi Awolo. May I also make reference to Malam Abubaka Tafawa Balewa of 1948. He said, since 1914, the British government has been trying to make Nigeria into one country. But Nigeria people themselves are historically different. In their background, in their religious belief and customs, and do not show themselves any sign of willingness to unite. I call on Biafras today, if Nigeria continue to show the willing, unwillingness to unite, which they can never unite, Biafra has to wake up to understand that unity will become our strength. The agitators, different groups of agitators should understand that the time has come to put your differences apart and join the moving train. Nigeria unity is only a British intention for the country. The unity of Biafra agitators will be the interest of liberation. This testimony came from the Prime Minister, from the first Prime Minister of the mistake called Nigeria. One of the creators of this mistake called Nigeria, Sir Peter Smithers, who was cabinet minister during the colonial regime, admitted the wickedness of the British colonists when he said in 1998, the creation of Nigeria involved forcing several colonists, forcing several ethnic groups, cultural and religious groups into one political structure. Will you dispute this fact? The answer is no. In retrospect of over 100 years, it is clear that this was a grave mistake which has cost many lives and will probably continue to do so if Biafra did not rise up to do the needful through the Biafra Republic government in exile. Today, I want to inform Biafra people that on the 30th day of May 2023, the Biafra Liberation Army engaged the killers from the Nigeria terrorist government and they prevented them from burning our villages and killing our women and children. Nigeria unity has cost more lives of the Igbo Biafra and their properties than any other nation in the evil entity called Nigeria. May I also remind you about the aftermath of the election. 
where their friends and their properties were rendered useless. We saw the burning of market in Lagos. We saw the attack against Igbo speaking part of Bia France in Lagos. In every given uprising in Nigeria, the Igbo speaking part of Biafra has always become the scapegoat. At any crisis, it is not that they are the one orchestrating this crisis. When there is crisis in the north, the Igbo people are being killed. And after they call it political or religious crisis, the Igbo speaking part of Biafra has always paid the price of one Nigeria at any given provocative or provocation. We have found ourselves at the center of massacre and the Biafra people and their property are being destroyed, the life wasted without anybody being held responsible. They also become political slaves where they are humiliated at the presidential inaugural ceremony like we see Soludo today being chased away from the VIP session of the inaugural at the Ego Square, Abuja. Soludo was a go is the governor of Anambra State. When he came into the office, the first thing he did was to fight against the seat at home. He failed. He decided to take his war against our Eastern Security Network. He failed. We have not forgotten what led to the Nigeria Biafra War and how Emeka Chief Chuku Emeka Odumewo Joko, our Ikemba of Unewi, Yezi Buburuburu, and the man who saw tomorrow, tried to save the future of what is happening today against Biafra people and against Ndibu. The same people betrayed him. They betray him out of envy, ignorance, jealous, and greed. The same thing they have done to Mazin Amdekano. It was the governors of the Southeast that gathered together to proscribe IPOB and tag them terrorists. While IPOB in quest to get their freedom through peaceful means, did not commit any crime. Neither do they have arms. But they were tagged terrorists by the governors today who parade themselves as the representative from the south old eastern region of Biafra. Mazenam Bikano cried out. The same vision of Chief Ikemba Newi to bring us to a promised land. Today, he was betrayed and he is being illegally detained in the DSS dungeon. I want Biafra's people to understand today that any day you give go ahead, we will bring him out the way he was taken away from, from us. We have equally not forgotten how the Igbo pregnant women cried and died in pains when their womb had been wickedly opened with cutlass and their children had been brought out cruelly during the Biafra Nigeria genocide war. It is equally painful to remember the death of our children as a result of malnutrition. We have not forgotten that the end of the Nigeria Civil War, it was declared no victor, no vanquish by the then head of state, General Yakubu Gowon, who today 
at the swearing-in ceremony of Bolatinubu described the war as fracas, little fracas. We banned him from entering Biafra land and he has gotten our message. He will never step his foot in Biafra land again. After 50 years of the war, we have defeated them from defeating Gowon. I want to inform Biafrans, what follows after the declaration was a systematic disenfranchisement of Ndibo and other parts of Biafra. The first ceremonial president of said in 1964, I have one advice to give to our politicians. If they have decided to destroy their national unity, then they should summon a round table conference to decide how their national asset should be divided before they seal their doom by satisfying their lust for office. Today, lust for office is not just for the Northern, Northerners, nor for the Yorubas, nor for the Caliphate. Rather, the lust for office has overwhelmed the Igbo speaking part of Biafra and they have become slave. The loss for office is the reason Soludo entered as a governor of Anambra state and his achievement was to fight the people of Anambra who were sitting at home. Instead of fighting to make Anambra a better place, he decided to fight the people who voted for him and decided to use civil disobedience to demand the release of Mazin Nandikan. Today, he was disgraced at Abuja. And that particular scene, where Soludo was being chased away from inaugural VIP area, can never be wiped out of, the, of this uh, history. I make this suggestion according to Zeke, because it is better for us and many admirers abroad, abroad that we should disintegrate in peace and not in pieces. This was in 1964. Zeke Iwe, who was already the pioneer of one Nigeria, called for the disintegration of Nigeria in peace and not in pieces. Before the Biafra war started. So he saw the war coming and he called for disintegration. But well, nobody listened. Should the politician fail to heed this warning, then I will venture the prediction that the experience of the Democratic Republic of Congo will be child play if ever it comes to our turn to play such tragic role. I want to inform Biafrans today that indeed they have pushed us to that role. Zeke was predicting today, not after three years of this prediction, the Biafra. No, the prediction is what is about to start. The Igbo speaking states have the worst federal road network comparison to other geopolitical zone in Nigeria. And I want every Biafrans to take a look and those who shout for one Nigeria to take a look and go to the northern part of Nigeria. They created more local government for themselves. They legalized them without anybody raising eyebrow. They manipulated even the national census by counting cows, fowls, and brothers and sisters from Nigeria Republic as Nigerians. During the election, we saw them from Nigeria Republic having voters card when those who were born in Nigeria and they are Nigerians, don't have voters card. People from Nigeria Republic have voter, voters card. Just to maintain political suppression. And you know this, there are people who parade themselves within the Biafra territory as elected officials. I want to remind you today 
that the 12th state of the northern Nigeria, as at yesterday, are under Sharia law because the states are going to increase. But let me promise you one thing you can never succeed in the old eastern region. They are killing Christians in the north. They kill them for blasphemy. And everyone is scared to talk. As a result of the dishonesty from the census board, there are more in number in the National Assembly and the House of Representatives. Today, in 2023, they came to shamelessly deceive Nigerians that they want to start census. They know the implication and they know that Biafra people are ready to go home and get in their census and get them counted in Biafra land. And they know the divided Nigeria, that the Nigeria has been divided like never before. They hide under the shadow of religions to cause us pains. And because they drive joy and our sorrow is giving them joy. That is why they always kill us at every little provocation. In this glaring cruel injustice, this misguided chaos of one Nigeria cannot stand. I want Biafra people to look at all the political leaders from the old eastern region today. They have all been humiliated by Fulanese. They are ashamed to align Biafrans. They are ashamed to accept that they have made a mistake. And in as much as they are ashamed, we still stretch our hand and wait for them to repent. Waiting does not mean that what we have activated yesterday is not going to go into full force. In fact, the liberation of Biafra have started in full force. And today, the Biafra Liberation Army has proven to them that we are ready to go. After having watched what Nigeria has done, disappearance of about 40,000 Biafra youth, over 50,000 Biafra youth killed, extrajudicially, almost 10,000 languishing in different dungeons in Nigeria today. Some articles estimated are almost 40,000 Biafra youth are languishing in dungeon, including our leader Mazin and the I want to inform Biafrans that we have activated almost all the department of the Biafra Republic government in exile. Haven't mentioned the ordeal of Biafra people and our readiness to exit Nigeria this year. I hereby activate the de facto government of Biafra in the homeland. To remember the fallen heroes of Biafra who because of their activities and their bravery gave us the courage to stand very tall against our enemies today. The de facto government is hereby activated. In the coming days, the inauguration will start state by state and we will announce the cabinet just like we did in the Biafra Republic government in exile. Today, we have over 113 cabinet members and counting. Boko Haram are being recruited into Nigeria military, contradicting their treatment against IPOB, against Masop, against other Biafra agitating group. In time to unite, that time is now. It is time to unite against the enemy 
of our freedom. Therefore, I call on all agitating group to join hand together and let defeat Islamic State in Nigeria and free ourselves from Islamic bondage. I call on all aggrieved parties to join the moving train of the Biafra Republic government in exile. Deep down inside you, you know we have done something you have never done before. We have made our achievement and still counting. We have breaking the jinx. It is time to put differences aside if you really believe that you are genuinely fighting for Biafra. Don't make Simon Epa the Biafra you are fighting. It is time you bring what you have on the table. And for those who will say over their dead body, will Biafra come through Simon Epa? Go and write your will. You call me agent of Nigeria. Today, I am not. Call me agent of Tinubu. Today, I am not. You call me Ohanez Ndibu agent. Today, I am not. You called me Sabo. Today, I am not. The day of for the integration of the Biafra Republic government in exile will be announced very soon. The achievement so far are numerous. We have been recognized globally by the Universal Peace Federation. It is a step to the right direction and a very strong message has been sent. The recognition of the by the Universal Peace Federation is not just a global thing, it's universal. Universal Peace Ambassador. And like everybody know, that is whom we are. We represent peace. But in quest to make this peace reality, we have prepared for war. Having activated the de facto government of Biafra in the homeland, I hereby approve the immediate issuance of Biafra National Identity Card globally, starting from today. For those who are yet to have liaison office, be patient. The liaison office will be announced in many countries and they are going to be activated as soon as possible. For those who have had the privilege to have liaison office in their country, you wait patiently for the biometric machine to be installed in your liaison office in order to serve you very well. in order to make sure that we follow the template for the liberation of Biafra, all the government official is hereby requested to start the process of having their official identification card, starting from today. And we Call on Biafra people to keep their fingers crossed. Now, it is not the time to make noise on social media. The call to unite the entire agitating group is genuine and coming from the heart of Mazen Ambikano and myself. If you say that you are genuinely fighting for Biafra, it is time to keep your ego aside. You can never defeat me. It is time to keep your evil aside. You can't bring me down. Before joining the Biafra struggle, I was somewhere. 
and now I'm here. And I'm really prepared. If you know what is speaking inside me, you will go and cover yourself for even trying to fight me. Today, another grace has been given to you. My focus is to make sure that Biafra people are liberated and history is made. My focus is not to use my spiritual power and everything I have against individuals. I'm using it against Islamic State that enslaved Ndibo. Those of you who called me terrorist, those of you who wanted me killed, those of you who placed bounty on me, those of you who were happy claiming that they have arrested me in Finland, thinking that you have a hope in Nigeria. I am very, very sure that you have lost hope. I'm very, very sure that today you are disappointed. But let me tell you, the love I have for you has no limit. You have come to understand that I am not what you call me. You call me agent of Nigeria and you know that I'm not. You call me that I'm working for Tinubu to destabilize the Southeast to favor his, you know that I'm not. Because today, I will become the worst enemy of Tinubu administration. I will make sure, not just the worst enemy, but he will ever regret becoming the president of Nigeria in 2023. So, I am not his agent. And because every name you called me, they have turned out to be fake. My love knows no bound. And today, I am stretching the olive branch again to those who have called me names and castigated me in order to be afraid not to come. Your attack, your blackmail did not yield any fruit and it will never yield any fruit. Not now that you have entered officially the Islamic State of Nigeria, that you are going to waste your time fighting Samaragwa. No. Let us join our resources together and tell Fulanese that we can make them very restless until the day we are going to exit Nigeria. And I am calling on those who think they have money in Biafra land and beyond, and you are a Biafra. Believe me, it is time you put your ego aside and financially support the liberation of Biafra. When you are waiting for Samanepa to fail, actually, I have succeeded in making sure that every mechanism needed to get Biafra is being put in place. So if Biafra did not come today, it is because of you. Because every mechanism to get Biafra is being put in place. We have activated the Biafra Republic government in exile. It is functional. We are making waves globally. Now today, we have activated the de facto government in the homeland. And our agenda is to take power from every political leaders in Biafra land from local government chairman to up to the governor and up to the senators and the House of Representative members, all of them by force. Chase them out of Biafra land. They will never step their foot in, in a given point. And it's going to start very soon. Because it is a self-defense. These are the people who bring repentant Boko Haram to kill our people. So we have to fight them from the source. At the same time, to them, for those who are ready to repent, to come back home. Expectation. You weren't expecting what is happening today to happen. And if you think it is going to get better, you are living in full paradise. So I call on you today to put your ego aside. Those who think that 
they are going to be exposed to the enemy if they come to support Biafra. Come out. We are going to sign memorandum of understanding. Bring your money, bring your resources, and let us fight this thing once and for all. The structures are there. Everything that you need to get Biafra is there. We have activated them. And so don't come tomorrow to ask me, where is the Biafra? When you have nothing to do, when you have contributed nothing. You think Biafra is going to come by Simon Ekpa cutting his hand? The answer is no. Simon Ekpa has done his part in the struggle for Biafra. And I will continue to do my part, which is laying the foundation to liberate Biafra people. And the foundation we are laying today is solid. Foundation that is very, very solid. Foundation to convince the world that Biafra people are together and they are ready to do anything to leave Nigeria. The foundation that it is no longer in the, in the hands of group. Foundation that the agitation for Biafra or the liberation of Biafra is no longer controlled by miscrant. It is now controlled by professionals. It is now being propelled by government. The foundation is strong. Now we are going to the homeland to demonstrate that we are not just strong in diaspora or in exile, that we also are very formidable in the homeland. And that is what the de facto government of Biafra is home, in homeland is going to prove to the world. The discussion of Biafra is going on in the global stage. And I want every Biafrans to pay attention to what we are going to do, especially when we have made public the Lyazian offices that has the biometric machine starting from next month. May God bless you. May God bless Biafra. May God bless Masin and Bekanu. May God bless our current and present heroes, the Eastern Security Network and the Biafra Liberation Army. May God bless the commanders who have sacrificed everything they have, their comfort, their time, their life, to see that our land is not being overrun by Nigeria-sponsored terrorism. I thank you all. May God bless you. I remain the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic Government in Exile, Ambassador Simon Epa. I celebrate you for what you have done so far, those of you who have committed yourself financially to this movement. From here, from me, is good evening. You must go and listen to Simon Eba, who is doing a very fantastic job. Very great job that Simon Eba is doing. Very, very, absolutely fantastic job that he's doing. You must listen to him and share his videos accordingly. Very, very important. He is bringing a new dimension to this very awareness that we are making. And you must listen to him. Very, very important.